Hello, hello, good evening, everyone. Good evening and welcome. So here we are once again for the last lesson of this week. Um, I hope you guys are doing amazing and I also hope that we are going to have a great class today. So let me tell you that for tonight, we are going to be practicing something um, that it's not the most common skill to practice, to be honest. Normally, when we talk about English, we not, uh, only refer to speaking and listening. Those are the two main um, skills that we work on. And as teachers, um, you know, it's it's something that we also do, that uh, we rarely teach about writing and reading. For tonight, we're not going to be writing, so don't get afraid because I know that writing is um, probably one of the most complicated skills to learn and the one that takes the most time and dedication to um, to do properly. Now, tonight, what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be um, carrying out some reading practices. I have some paragraphs for you. As we are in a pre-advanced level, I will assume that it's not going to be a huge deal, you know, to go ahead and read some paragraphs. That's because I wanted also to get a little bit out of the routine, and I wanted you guys to um, get to experience something a little bit, you know, different. Um, so yeah, that's basically um a part of what we're going to be doing, and uh, <clears throat> also this activity that I told you about last night, which is the fact that you guys are going to be interacting with one another, um, asking each other questions, and uh, well, getting to conversate if possible. I want to encourage you guys to. Answer to the best of your possibilities, okay? Don't only answer with one or two words. Go farther and beyond. If you can, um, please go ahead and, and reply with more interactive um, answers. And even if you guys get to create a conversation, don't be afraid because tonight is about you and it's mostly about practice. I normally, at the middle of the course, like to take at least one class just to give you guys the um the you know the chance to practice as much as possible so tonight will be that chance if you start a conversation with your classmate the one that you are asked you have asked the question to well <clears throat> go ahead no problems the rest of us are going to be your listeners as also listening of course is a good skill you know to manage um the way the practice or the way the activity is going to work is as following you guys, I'm going to pick one of you, and I will assume that you already know what question you want to ask your classmates. So I will pick one of you. So that person goes ahead and asks the question to whoever you want, okay? There is no rules on who you are going to pick, at least no rules apart from the only one rule, which is that um, we have to skip those people that have already participated. Like for example, let's say that I pick Ana uh, Mendoza to start. And, um, she then goes ahead and asks a question to Dennis, all right? So we're not going to be able to come back to Dennis and ask Dennis for, um, you know, for a second question. The idea is that everyone gets to practice and everyone gets to um, to be part of the activity. So um, I'm going to be keeping track of who has already participated into the into the activity. And then you guys don't, do not, don't have to worry about that. And just go ahead and look for someone else. You know, if you ever come to um to be, you know, wondering to ask a person that has already participated, we're going to have to move on and you ask somebody else. So the first person I would like to start the conversation or the activity for tonight, I think is going to be, let me see, um, it is. So yes, it is. You're going to be the one starting the activity tonight. So your first question, you can pick anyone from your classmates, ¿sí? cualquiera de sus compañeros, and ask your question. So it is, what is your question? <clears throat> Excuse me, teacher, uh, the, the question uh, uh, about the, the, the that, I don't know, uh, I don't understand. Ayer les dije que tenían que pensar en una pregunta para hoy. Sí, para hacérsela a cualquiera de sus compañeros. Entonces, usted puede preguntar acerca de lo que quiera. O sea, lo que sea. Le puede preguntar cuál es su color favorito, cuál okay. es, um, qué sé yo, su bebida favorita, su, su estación favorita del año, cuál es el país en el que sueña vivir, um, cuántos hijos quiere tener. I don't know. Just 
any question, ¿sí? Siempre y cuando, claro, sea una, una pregunta respetuosa, cualquier pregunta, ¿sí? Usted piense... Pero, el... uh -huh. ¿Y vamos a ocupar al, a, alguna estructura o algo solamente así? No, sí. lo que sea. Como le digo, o sea, okay. puede ser cualquier pregunta y siguiendo la estructura que quiera. O sea, si es en pasado, presente, futuro, lo que sea. No problem. Ok. Uh -huh. uh, my question is, uh, Noemi. Hi, Noemi. Ok. <laughs> sí, sí, sí. Easy. The question is easy. Uh, what do you call a favorite? Uh, okay. My favorite color is the red. And why? I would like you to add, yes. if you ask questions about preferences, si, si hacen preguntas así cortas de preferencias, traten de agregar un why. Y eso es lo que yo siempre hago, ¿verdad? Que es el por qué. ¿sí? ¿Ah? Para que tengamos una pequeña explicación. No significa que vamos a dar que hay que porque el robo. No, si una pequeña explicación. Sí. Tratar de practicar un poco más. Sí. So, yeah. Um, why is it red your favorite color, Noemi? Red. Eh... <clears throat> Why? Uh, for because for me, uh, the signific the means the sangre, mm -hmm, the blood, the blood, the the yeah. Jesus Christ. Oh, okay, yes. good. That is a nice meaning. Very good. Very very good. Yeah. Okay, Noemi, I hope you have your question ready. And uh, who is your question going to be for? ¿A quién le vamos a preguntar? Um, a Iris. <laughs> okay. So, Iris, what is your question? Um, what do you... Do you number... Num, number favorite? Okay, so what is your favorite Nine. number? Uh -huh. What is your favorite one. number? So it is. What is your favorite number and why? Favorite uh, number mm -hmm. is eight. Okay. Because, it, because my, my uh, I don't know, fecha, my day, the, uh -huh. the birthday is 8 January. Oh, okay. 8 October. Yes. Oh, <laughs> 8 so October, no. <laughs> Oh, very good. My, my 8 October. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> my birthday. Very nice. Ah. So you share the same I day, think. not the same date, but the same day. <laughs> very nice. Very good. So, uh, Iris, your birthday is on January 8th, and uh, Noemi, your birthday is on October 8th. So, very nice. That's a yes. nice detail to share, you know, something really nice to have in common. It's going to be easy for you to remember yeah. each other's birthday. But you were <laughs> coincidencia, teacher. Uh, coincidence. Coincidence. Mm -hmm. Coincidence. Yes. All right. Very good. So this has basically closed in a circle. Therefore, we're going to have to pick someone else to get started once again. Uh, and I think we're going to go with uh, Dennis. Would you mind, Dennis, go ahead and ask one of your classmates? Apart, of course, from Noemi and Iris. Uh, for mm -hmm. sure. Uh, let me see. Um, I'm going to ask to... Where is uh Jose Irabin? Okay. Uh, what is your uh, what kind of music do you like? All right. So Irabin, what kind of music do you like? Well, I don't have a favorite one. I used to listen music depending on my mood. For example, sometimes I'm happy and I listen to rock music. Sometimes I'm a kind of blue and I used to listen ballads. Uh, it's up to my mood. All right. Very good. That's understandable. I think many people have, you know, that kind of taste. Normally, I think music goes by um stages. Like we don't have a set favorite music, at least in my opinion. Um, because before I used to say that my favorite music was rock, but then I discovered that I like to listen to many things. Like, for example, when I'm driving, I, I know it's weird, but when I'm driving, I like to listen to salsa because it keeps me awake. I know that salsa is not like a very common uh, genre to listen to. But yeah, uh, when I'm at home, I think I will even get to listen to K-pop, you know, like uh, in between the many genres, even that comes across. So it's like many things. So 
It's a very good answer because it depends on the mood. So nice. Now, arriving. Who are you going to be asking and what is going to be your question? Please, um, let's try to step away from, you know, closing the circle, not asking Dennis, but somebody else. Let me see. <clears throat> I'm watching some faces. Uh, for example, Ana Filomena. All right. And what is your question? Uh, can you drive? And why did you decide to learn to drive? Okay, that's a very good question. Can you drive and why did you start learning to drive? Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, yes, I can drive. And I decide to learn because it's very important to know. Uh, imagine if you have some emergence in your house with your family or in another path. Mm -hmm. So you can... Take the car and go ahead. <laughs> yeah, and be, as I mean, I know that it might sound rude in Spanish, but in English it's not, you know, be useful when the moment comes. So yes. be of service when, when you're needed. So very good. That is a really it's nice very decision. very necessary. <laughs> yeah. Nowadays, I think it's something very, very necessary. I think things that are not like too necessary are like learning, you know, how to drive a truck or things like those, but driving a basic car, I think it's a necessity more than a commodity. Back in the day when people didn't really have cars or very often people didn't have cars, um, it was more a, con a commodity, sí, como una comodidad, ¿verdad? como un lujo, por eso decimos commodity. Um, but now it's more a necessity. Like basically, let's imagine that there is a party or there is like a funeral and people need you to drive a car to get a car from point A to point B and you're not capable of, well, that's going to be a problem. So if you know how to drive, you're going to be able to help uh, and to be useful, as I said before. So very nice. Good answer. Mm -hmm. Good answer. Okay, now, um, Anna, who would you like to ask and what will be your question? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think maybe uh, Daisy. All right. Daisy what, is your, is. what is your question for Daisy? Daisy. Um, which is your favorite country and why? All right. Which is your favorite country and why? My favorite country mm -hmm. is uh, El Salvador. Oh, okay. Why El Salvador? Because uh, here uh, uh, is my family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the is uh, the beautiful place, uh, the beautiful beach, uh, the mountain. Uh, wow. Okay. It's, it's, it's amazing. Uh, in, okay. In All I right. Like so, it. I love it. <laughs> all right. Very good. That sounds amazing. You know, very patriotic, very uh, proud of being Salvadorian. I like that. That's something very, very nice to have. So, um, and, you know, Many people couldn't agree more. We have a piece of everything. Like we have been through a lot because, um, you know, we have been to, through many situations, but even uh, we have been through them, we still have the courage and the energy to be nice as people. So El Salvador is a very strong country. We have fought many different things and we're still here. So it is our duty, I think, as Salvadorians to be proud of who we are and to be proud of our country. So, great. Very good pick, Daisy. Thank you. Now, who would you ask next and what is your question? Francisco. Okay. Your question is for Francisco and what is your question? El número que se ha marcado no existe en este preciso momento. Por favor, llamar más tarde. <laughs> Sorry. Ay, no problem. Let's go. We have tried. Let's go, okay. Let's go. Well, no, it's okay. What is your question, Daisy? Yeah. <laughs> okay. My question. Is, my question is: uh, Do you have pets? All right. Yeah. If if you have pets, how many do you have? And what kind? I think. Okay. I uh, I have ten ten um um dogs. Um, I am rescue the street. Ten yeah. dogs. Yeah, ten. 
Wow. Yeah. They, That's quite uh, some. Uh, the re the reason is um the rescue uh, the street for people uh, uh no sé cómo se dice aban uh, abandona abandon them abandon it yeah eh, es es más que están que hay unos acostados ahorita no sé si se mira mm, oh yeah acostado. yeah yeah uh -huh. ahí está la otra acostada no sé si se mira that one I didn't see <laughs> yeah um, uh, realmente no hay la razón cómo se diría um, uh, there's not a reason to... uh -huh. yeah yeah uh, I love to pet uh, I love uh, dogs and cats everywhere everywhere um, um to ¿Qué animales? Animals. 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 Mm -hmm. <laughs> sorry sorry it's okay I love uh, I love the life the um one cada uno de ellos <laughs> Mm -hmm. No sé si lo dije bien, sorry. No, it's okay. It's all right. So you love each and every one of them. You can say it like that, uh, or you can say I love every single one of them. Oh, Hay dos okay. opciones. Each and every one of them sería mm -hmm. cada uno de ellos, and yeah. every one of them sería a cada uno de ellos también, pero de una forma más inclusiva, como más grupal, digamos. Cuando oh, decimos okay. each and every one, es como que cada uno por separado. Okay. So, okay, great. Yeah, I mean, you see, that's great something sense. that I do not share, to be honest. Um, I mean, I don't say that I don't like pets. I do. Oh. But the thing is that, in my opinion, from my perspective, as, as me, you know, myself, I think my lifestyle will be unfair to a pet. Like, I feel like I will not have um, the time. To be honest, it's like... Many times, I mean, I have a dog. We do. We have a dog here in, in my family. I take care of him. Whenever I have time, I am there for him. But I know that sometimes I'm not there for him. And that's why I sometimes think that I do not want to have a pet until I'm very old. Like, when you know, many people, when we get old, we have more free time. So we don't have to work. We don't have to worry, for example, about going out or, or things like those. But something that I always think about is like, for example, when I get to get married, if I, for any reason, just decide to go with my wife to stay at El Tunco or somewhere, you know, away from the house in the hotel or place that I decide to go is not pet friendly. What am I going to do with my dog or what am I going to do with my cat? That's the reason why I normally like cats better than dogs right now, because cats are more independent. I'm not trying to start a fight. Not neither a debate, but I'm only you know presenting my point of view. Um, but that's why I don't really like to have pets in my uh lifestyle because I feel like um it will be unfair. I will be a bad you know companion for the pet. But in the, your case, I feel like you have the desire, you have the heart to take care of them. So that's very beautiful, and uh, I am glad that people like you exist in the world because. You are the kind of person who is the contrary to me because you would like to help your pets. And uh, I prefer, you know, pets to be with people like you than pe with people like me who will not take good care of them or with people like the owners of or the previous owner of the pets that you have because they didn't take care of them. As you said, you found your pets abandoned on the street. So that's very bad. So that's where I don't want to get. Si no quiero llegar a convertirme en eso, ¿verdad? En un, uno que abandone un animal. Entonces mejor no tenerlo a llegar a ese punto donde lo tenga que abandonar y luego le quede a Francisco y luego Francisco tenga 11 perros o 10 perros y un gato y es como no I prefer not to have them but it, it's just great you know to see people like you people who like to take care of pets so thank you thank you very much for what you do okay all right so Francisco your yeah. question who are you going to ask and what is your question okay espero hacerlo bien para la compañera Daisy uh, uh, well, se puede no, she has already participated, so we have to pick ah, someone. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, Andrea Michelle. There um, we go. Yes, you can ask her. <laughs> well, what is the university grade you study, and why do you study it? No sé si lo hice bien. ¿Qué carrera universitaria estudias y por qué la estudias? Okay, Andrea Michelle, what is your university degree, and why did you decide to study that degree? Good evening. Um, I study industrial engineering at the University in Del Salvador. 
Uy, creo que se nos apagó el micrófono, Andrea. There we go. Because I like the machines, maybe. Okay, so in your I really like the machines. Yeah. All right, very good. As they say in Spanish, para todos de Dios. Very nice, very, very nice. Yeah, because industrial engineering, um, it is a very tough degree, I have heard. I don't know. I like uh, civil engineering. I have never studied anything related to that. Apart from English, I have only learned about electricity and air conditioning. But yeah, it seems like, you know, uh, That engineering or um, industrial engineering is a very tough degree, but nice. That's very nice of you. You know that uh, you're learning about that. And how do you like it? Do you like it as you thought you were going to like it, Andrea? Yeah, teacher. Este, ¿Te gusta tanto como pensabas la carrera? Yes, because the uh, mantenimiento, maintenance. <clears throat> maintenance, uh -huh, maintenance. Of the machine is, is incredible. <laughs> All right. Very good. Nice. And that's yeah. also very important, you know, that you enjoy what you're studying. Very good. So yeah. let's hear from your question. And what question are you going to ask? I mean, to who and what question are you going to ask? Maritza. <clears throat> okay. And what is your question for My Maritza? My question is, what's your hobby and why all right so what's your hobby and why maritza hello evening um uh, my hobby is uh, listen to music mm -hmm. and because uh, i like to sing i I like uh, listening uh, um, kind of music. Um, uh, basic. <laughs> uh, in my free time, uh, I listen to, mu to music. And when I made the um, uh, clean my house i mm -hmm. i can listen to music i and i um can to sing uh, whatever <laughs> and what kind of music do you like to listen to when you're cleaning your house because there is there are a specific playlist for that what do you like to uh, listen it's, to it's the band um sometimes i i like romantic music in spanish sometimes i like uh, cumbias i like <laughs> okay um, yes all right so when um, you listen to cumbias i bet that the the cleaning is done very fast right because you're dancing and like moving and, and the cleaning <laughs> is done very fast yes, yes yeah but when you uh when you listen to romantic music i bet that you take longer because yeah you have to start stop for a moment to cry normally that happens yeah <laughs> <laughs> very good oh uh, no oh. for for huh? me it's, it's i like you uh just, think, just you just think. enjoy I like to think. okay i i i enjoy to sing Yes. All right. Very good. Yeah, it's a very common practice. You know, I think that basically most people do that when uh, we do the What? cleaning. I think that most people do that when we do the cleaning. Creo que la mayoría hacemos eso cuando limpiamos. Because in my yes. case, it's the same. Like if I'm cleaning anything, if I ever clean anything, um, I like to play some music. Like, for example, I like to I like to go back for, I don't know. The Beatles sometimes. Sometimes I like to listen to um, ACDC. You know, that's when my, my cleaning is done relatively quickly. Um, <clears throat> in other days, maybe I will listen to Miley Cyrus and different songs of her. So depending on the day, there is always going to be music being played at the background of the, of the cleaning. So great. Very nice. Now, Maritza, your question, who would you ask and what will you ask? Um, 
Um, um, let's see. Um, Dennis. All right. Great. Dennis hasn't really gotten a question yet. So, what are you going to ask Dennis? Dennis. Um, what kind of music <laughs> do you uh, enjoy sing? Okay, that's a tricky one. Uh, I think uh, for Dennis. Uh huh. Uh huh. ¿Qué más? I, 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 I understand that he sing. Well, really. Let's see. What kind of music do okay. you like to sing, Dennis? Well, I'm very glad to you uh, asking me that. Um, let me see. Him. Uh, I really like uh, to sing uh, rock music. Uh, as you can see, my my long hair. <laughs> uh, it can it can talk um, um by uh, but um almost almost all the time um uh. I sing in my house. Uh, I really enjoy listening music as well. But and that's it. Um, uh, I like to sing rock music. All right. And what will be your favorite song to sing, uh, Dennis? If you have a favorite. Um, mm, I really like to sing a uh, so a stereo song, uh, like. The Musical Ligera, okay. uh, it's my favorite uh, kind of music to sing. Very active. It's a, a like a very active rhythm. Yeah, very nice. Great. Very good. Okay. Thank you very much for uh, for that. Now, vamos a iniciar otro círculo. Sí, solamente creo que unas cuatro personas más para luego tener lo que les decía de la práctica de lectura. Aunque igual, ¿verdad? Lo importante es que lleguemos a practicar tantos como se pueda. Y creo que este otro círculo lo vamos a iniciar con Boris. ¿Sí? So, Boris, your duty is to ask a question to any of your classmates. Uh, cualquiera de los que no han participado. So, we're going to have to take away Ana, uh, Mendoza, Denis, Maritza, Eraivin, Noemi, Iris, um, Andrea Michel, Francisco, Daisy, and I think, yeah, those are the ones that are not available to pick. You can pick anyone else. Okay. So your question uh, and to whom are you going to ask the question? <laughs> Let me see the the, the <clears throat> participants. Okay. Uh, Andrea Michel. She has already participated. Maybe oh. uh, yeah, we can Andrea ask Andrea Geraldine. Uh-huh. There you go. Okay. Yes, teacher. I'm okay. here. <laughs> there you are. So um, uh, the question is uh, what's your biggest Passion in life. All right. Ah, my bigger passion. Your biggest passion yeah. in life, yes. Um, the truth is, <clears throat> my bigger, bigger fa uh, passion is traveling. <laughs> okay. And do okay. you do it often? Do you travel op often? Uh, a little. <laughs> a little? Only, only Guatemala. <laughs> okay. How many times have you gone to Guatemala? Uh, maybe it four, uh, four. I think I don't know four in the in the year. Mm -hmm. Four I veces no sé cómo se dice. Times. Ah, mm -hmm. four times in the in the year. Wow. All right, so that's good. Do you go to different places or do you go to the same place all the time? Uh, in the, the same place only. Oh, okay, so uh, is it? Uh -huh. In the church. <laughs> oh. Go to the church, uh, do you go to Esquipulas? Why, uh -huh. huh? to es is it to Esquipulas that you go? No, no. Oh. No, it, it's in the city. Oh, okay, it's great. Yes. Very good. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. I have been to Guatemala a few times as well. 
Uh, I have family in Zacapa, ah. like one of the, you know, the um, departments up north. And uh, yeah, I've been to Guatemala City twice. And uh, I, as I said the other day, I think it's one of the most beautiful countries that we have around us. Of course, El Salvador has its things and El Salvador is, is going to be um, the top list, you know, like on, on the on the rating. But Guatemala is a great place. If you guys ever want to go visit, you know, a different country and don't have a huge budget, well, there is an option. Well, um, now, Geraldine, who are you going to ask and uh, what is going to be your question? My question is very funny. <laughs> okay. That's nice to know. It's for uh, and Boris. Okay. <laughs> So shoot it back to Boris. Boris, uh, do you know to make pupusas? <laughs> oh, only <laughs> eating. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, I would like uh, to learn to cook, but I, I couldn't. I don't know. Uh, but uh, I can eat pupus. <laughs> por malo, saben que por estar de malo me pasó, me, me, me dio tos, porque pensé que Boris le iba a decir, sí, sé cómo hacerlas, pero eh, me nada más. <laughs> okay nice yeah i mean um it's a tough thing learning how to make pupusas is really tough i had to do it before i went to the u.s i had to learn how to make pupusas how to make pasteles how to make a few things i like cooking it's not like i don't like it but i never thought i was ever going to make a pupusa but i had to learn and when i was living in minnesota i once got together with a friend of mine um she was also from here from san miguel and we got to be together you know with a family and, and a few people a few friends and we made pupusas for them and surprisingly enough not having all the ingredients because of course we were in the u.s we were in a state where there is not really like a lot of latinos so we didn't have anything close to quesillo we didn't have anything close to chicharron we didn't have anything that was compared to you know the actual pupusa but it was good it was not that bad. I mean, it was not the same flavor because we made it with mozzarella, but still, it was it was nice. It was not, you know, the worst pupusa I've ever had. It was okay. It was acceptable. So I was proud, you know, of my pupusa making skills in the U.S. So uh, moving on, we're going to have a few more people. I think we're going to go now with Nadia. So you're going to start a new round, Nadia. And uh, I would like to hear who are you going to be asking and what's the question you're going to be asking. <clears throat> Please, can you repeat the name, the person I, why I... Okay, I will share? I will mention the ones you can ask, okay? Voy a mencionar a los que se les puede preguntar, no a los que ya no se puede, sino a los que sí se podría preguntar. Um, you could ask Miguel Quintanilla, you could ask Jenny Santillana, you could ask um, Carlos Goches, you could ask Giselle Donado, you could ask um, Alicia Hernandez, Ana Mendoza, and Alejandro Quintanilla. Those are the people who are still available um, to participate. Okay, I select Alejandro Quintanilla. All right, very good. Uh, what's your question uh, for Alejandro? Nadia? My question is, what is the moment is uh, really happy to you? What is the moment? <laughs> okay, a moment that is really happy to you. A nice a memory. Hi, hello. A moment in the in the day or in my life or in the year? I think, I think it will be... In your uh, life. Yeah. Uh -huh. I think it will be more interesting if you go for your life. So a moment in your life that has made you happy or the happiest moment in your life, let's say. The happiest moment in my life. Uh, you know, that, that this is a very uh, hard question <laughs> very for one, me. Dennis. <laughs> yeah, because um, the happiest is... Um, uh, I, I read a, a, an author that I love. Uh, he's... Uh, Jordan Peterson, and he's a psychologist, a Canadian Canadian psychologist, mm -hmm. and he says in in one of in one of uh, his real mm -hmm. 
uh, that name is um, 12 Rules for Life. Mm -hmm. uh, and he says that happiness is um, sobrevalorada. Overvalued. Overvalued, yes. Uh, that, and that reason is that I, I don't think a lot in, in the happy, you know? In the happiness. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how can I say about this idea. I don't know what, which is my my. They don't have many moments. Maybe is is when I uh, wake up. Maybe every day because I am a very uh, gratefully mm -hmm. to to cool uh, mm -hmm. wake up. Every morning, okay. yeah, maybe, maybe this, but this is, is every day. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, it's in your life. So it's the happiest yes. moment in your life, you know, waking up every single day and having the chance yeah. to live one more day. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> Ustedes usted, sí, mire, se prepararon bien, venían con todo para contestar todos, han dado unas preguntas, <laughs> unas respuestas bien, bien fumadas. All right, very good. <laughs> Now, what is your question, Alejandro, and who are you going to ask? Um... Oh, I don't remember which of my okay, rapidito, classmates are, yes, Miguel, please. Miguel, Jenny, um, Carlos, uh, más bien, Goches, um, uh, Alicia Guadalupe, Miguel, Ayanira. if you want, yeah, okay, if so you Miguel. want, yes, Miguel, okay, Miguel, Miguel, um, I, I remember that you are an uh, industrial engineer, right? Yes. Okay. And what is your next step? What is your, your plan for the future, for your future, almost in the professional? Okay. Very good. So, Miguel, what is your plan for your career in the future? For your I, I study engineer electrical uh, because it is very interesting, right? And is well paid. Mm -hmm. Be a uh, human is is interesting. Uh, projects machine new uh, to for year. Okay, very good. Now, being that you're interested in that, Miguel, I don't know if you have any idea. I have heard. Okay, I'm not. I mean, I work as an electrician because that's my um, you know, my side hustle. I do work as an electrician, and I have heard that uh, there are very very few electrical engineers in our country is that true what do you know do you have any idea if if that is true or is it like a common degree to have pues si quieres se la pregunto en español sí porque esto me interesa sí, disculpen el resto que voy a robarme un, un minuto este sí este he escuchado yo verdad porque pues también trabajo como electricista y he escuchado que hay pocos eh, ingenieros eléctricos en el país no sé qué tanto sabe usted al respecto pues en español le contesto más rápido Ajá, si, sí, hay, sí, hay, sí. Hay, si hay una gran demanda de hecho hay una planta con frecuencia me preguntan por compañeros de clases que uh -huh. tuvieran interés en migrar para la planta oh. Sí, porque yo he escuchado que hay trabajos a veces, hay algunos proyectos que no se realizan porque no hay ingenieros, o sea, y porque muy pocos ingenieros hay en realidad en, en el país. Y pues es una carrera que me ha interesado ya desde hace un tiempo y pues sí, ¿verdad? O sea, sería interesante quizás seguirle la pista. So, ok, good, thank you, thank you very much. Okay. All right, so Miguel, um, your question, who are you going to ask and what is your question for one of the classmates? Se me escaparon los nombres aquí. <risa> ok, vamos a ver. Uh, tenemos a Jenny, tenemos a Goches, tenemos a Alicia Guadalupe, Ana Yanira y Nadia. Y ahorita también a Saúl. Vamos con Saúl. Ok. Saúl, what is your favorite food? Why? Ok, so what is your favorite food and why, Saúl? Uh, well, really, I don't have a favorite food, and uh, maybe beans, <laughs> and 
Why? Because uh, beans provide the, for the body different um, vitamins like calcium, the uh, zinc, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so you went for the most basic, but the most important, you know? Yeah, the most important. <laughs> Okay, very good. Thank you very much for sharing that, Saul. All right, so moving on, Saul. Um, your question: Who are you going to ask, and what is going to be your question tonight? Saul. Oh, uh, sorry, Play. sorry, teacher. I am I am out of home, and I don't have a good internet connection. Oh, that's okay. For that reason, I but. It, what is the question about that I, oh, no. I need to... Just ask a question, you know, any question about any idea that you would like to hear from your classmates. Now, the classmates that are right. to participate are Jenny, um, Coches, uh, Alicia Guadalupe, Ana Yanira, and Nadia Rodriguez. Uh, okay, Nadia Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite music, kind of music, and why? All right, very good. So, Nadia, what is your favorite kind of music and why? Um, hi, in my case, I love different kind of music, but um, I love uh, Vivaldi. Ooh. I love uh, um, so the Stereo. I love uh, um, Nina Simone. I love it's a very different kind of music. I it's love a mixture. Yeah, it's a mixture. I love a very good music in in the short um words. I love a uh, very good music. Um other other singer I love. Um yeah, I don't remember, but I well, love Simone, everybody. Uh, I love uh, Queen. It's a very good music. The Beatles. Um, the Beatles. Uh, jazz. I love jazz. I um, I love uh, the Four Seasons. The the Vivaldi. The I love Vivaldi. this. Yeah. Uh, which one yeah. is your favorite? Sorry that I interrupt, but which one is your favorite from the Four Seasons? <gasps> Ah, winter, winter Same. because uh, <laughs> playing many emotion and mm -hmm. the uh, short times yeah. have a many emotion to me. One critic uh, that winter. I have, one critic that I have is like the, the other, um, the other seasons. Normally, they reflect a little bit of the chaos or the, the that has you know that is in that season. But winter, at least winter from Vivaldi, I feel like it's too electrical too emotional for a winter like winters are normally more calm and in his case he decided to go with the biggest boom for winter and it's uh, it's, it's yeah it's strong it, it, it's a soft and the instant is a strong and oh, it's very intense it's, it's similar to bohemian rhapsody i will compare it to that yes 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 like, it yes, goes I can here see and it. there and it goes like in in in, in many directions Merry feeling and energy and sounds and and uh, it's a good piece of yeah. sound. Yeah. So for those of you and, guys, uh, oh, sorry. Uh huh. Yeah, and I read the poems, poems, mm -hmm. poemas, poems for the uh, for season. I recommend read the poems, the four season. Okay. It's a it's a other level. Okay. Very good. Very, very nice. Great. Okay. So for the rest of you guys, if you guys haven't heard to uh, any, you know, like uh, classical music. Uh, oh, great. That's nice, Dennis. So if you guys have never heard um, classical music, I will highly recommend Vivaldi. The only issue is that I think Vivaldi is like the, the top notch. Like if you listen to that, don't expect to get surprised by any other, you know, like I know Beethoven is good. I know that there are many others that are great, but um, yeah, if you go, if you start with Vivaldi, that's gonna be like the best of the best that you can listen to. Mostly the Four Seasons. But if you ever, you know, wonder and want to listen to Winter, which is um, El Invierno de Vivaldi, um, 
I highly recommend it. It's in many movies and it's it's an amazing song. And you're gonna tell me about it. You're gonna tell me that you have enjoyed it, hopefully. So yeah. All right. Bueno, <clears throat> creo que vamos a terminar mejor con las con las preguntas. Sí, vamos a, a, a seguir, así que vamos a iniciar el, la última ronda. Solo faltan alrededor de cuatro, así que coches. You're gonna start now. And uh, who would you like to ask? Remember that we still have um, Jenny, Alisa Guadalupe, and Ana Yanira. So, coaches, your question. For whom of them is it going to be and what is it going to be? Uh, for Alicia. <clears throat> okay. Well, she's out now. Yeah, um, she's out. <laughs> Dijo yo, no uh, quiero. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny. Okay. And what's your what question for Jenny? What makes you feel uh, proud about yourself? All right, Jenny, what makes you feel proud about yourself? Okay, I, I don't understand how about... ¿Qué la hace uh, sentir orgullosa acerca de usted misma? Um, I think my... <clears throat> Okay. Um, en inglés podría simplificarse algo como your courage, sí, ¿no? como el, el coraje, ¿verdad? El, en español es cierto que no estamos tan acostumbrados a utilizar la palabra coraje, ya que la interpretamos en muchas ocasiones como algo negativo, o sea, como un enojo, como algo que va más allá, pero en inglés es muy común que se utilice el courage para re referirse, ¿verdad?, a la fuerza que alguien puede tener para enfrentar situaciones difíciles. So, your courage. All right. Great. Very good. Very, very nice. Thank you very much for sharing. Okay, now, Jenny, in your case, um, your question, who are you going to ask and what is going to be your question? We still have... Um, para que no se nos cierre tan rápido el círculo, todavía, el círculo perdón, todavía tenemos a Andrea Michelle. Eh, I'm sorry, no. Creo que solamente nos queda Ana Yanina y Goches. Yeah. <coughs> Okay. Hello. So what's your question, Hello. Jenny? <clears throat> Repeat, please. Sorry, yeah, come again. What, what's your favorite sport and why? Oh, what is your favorite sport and why? <laughs> I don't like the sports. Well, that's why? a sad thing. <laughs> It's Why? so difficult. I don't like sports. Well, that's, that's could, could, could you change your your question, please? <laughs> why why don't like the sport? <laughs> okay, there is a different no. question. Uh, <laughs> what the terrorism? Because <laughs> no no don't like the sport. Mm. I prefer the mother of, of science or or literat literature uh -huh. or another kind of mm. knowledge instead right. of sports. Right. I think I think that the sports for me is not uh, is not good. Is not exciting. I I don't like these sports. I prefer uh, all things that that have to to think, uh, to read, to analyze. And for me, when uh, it feels also something curious because when I I watch the when in a competition. Mm -hmm. uh, and the winner, or I, I think is is enough. Is 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 too much uh, celebration about the sports. For me, uh, it's more important to celebrate and one discover or something science. 
scientists. All right. Uh, because for me, it's, it's more, it's more uh, exciting. Plausible, plausible, mm -hmm. I, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it's, it's, it's better. And I think that it's, it's, most, it's more important to uh, give scholarship for a study than for sports. Right. And I think the uh, merit of teacher. Uh, oui. I think it's merit. <laughs> I think it's merit. Uh, <laughs> when when <clears throat> when a student um uh, understand the uh, sobresale teacher. Um sobresale es understanding yeah no. mm -hmm. uh -huh. for me is is for me is, is the the most is is more important and i don't like when for one one pupil is good to to sports give a scholarships Mm -hmm. Because I think the the force or the or the most uh, ability for this peer this this person is sports, mm -hmm. but not uh, study in a in a college. Mm -hmm. I I think it's it's only my my way to to think. And if we see it from that perspective, I will totally agree with you. I used to think the same about mm -hmm. the university I used to work for because uh, they will give students a scholarship because they were good at playing soccer, but uh -huh. they didn't care about, for example, <laughs> if they were good students. You know, some students were very bad, but as far as they were still performing, mm -hmm. they will still get the scholarship. So it's like... Mm -hmm. um. I think what people, well, I mean, what what um, universities or colleges should do is pay attention to those people, but maybe to, you know, just put them in a team, not put them in the college. Like, help mm -hmm. them, yes, still don't abandon them, help them, but help them build up as a sportsman, no, not as a student, because yes. it is something that happens very often in the U.S. It has happened many times in the U.S., that um some people are good at basketball and they push it and push it and push it they want to make them lawyers but they're not lawyers they're good at basketball okay yes. so that's something I that is so. a little bit wrong because um i don't know when did sports get so mixed with studies and you know people started to get married because of something that didn't have to do with their actual abilities but um yeah you know that's just something that happened so very good idea, and uh, I totally can see where you're coming from. Now, let's see what Maritza has to say. <laughs> yes, teacher. When, um, when I was uh, uh, in the school, mm -hmm. we had a uh, um, dicho, oh, dicho oh, a o saying. pensamiento. A saying. Uh -huh. um, Mente sana en cuerpo sano. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I don't know <laughs> how to say. O wow. sea, manteníamos así como, como ese dicho, o nos, o nos enseñaban así como, como, digamos así, esa, 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 esa frase, ¿verdad? La conexión que, cuerpo ten... y mente. Like, ajá, o sea, be, me, ajá, me, mente sana ajá, en cuerpo sano, o sea, que para... Your body has to be good in your mind. Para promover, digamos, el deporte, pero también que no descuidáramos la parte de, del estudio. Uh -huh. O sea, que era una combinación de las dos cosas. Uh -huh. creo, creo que parte de lo que menciona Ana, creo que puede venir, ¿verdad? De que, o sea, y eso se ve bastante en muchas, en muchas universidades. My favorite. Sorry. It's my favorite name, teacher, Yanira. Oh, Yanira, ok, sorry, But sorry. But not Ana. Ok, no, sorry. Bueno, este, entonces, parte de lo que mencioné, Anina, creo que puede venir, ¿verdad?, del background de que a veces se da, y yo recuerdo que eso pasó en mi bachillerato, que había algunos compañeros que eran muy buenos en los estudios, pero a la hora que pasamos a la universidad, en la U, 
consideraron más a dos chicas que eran buenas jugando. Una era buena jugando voleibol y la otra era buena jugando fútbol. Entonces, mis compañeras que eran buenas estudiantes no recibieron apoyo. Eh, yo no estoy diciendo que dejemos de lado los deportes porque tampoco, o sea, en mi caso yo sí soy muy fan de muchas cosas, veo de todo casi. Eh, pero sí siento que eso es algo que no debería estar siempre conectado, ¿verdad? El estudio con los deportes y que las personas que reciben mayormente, no voy a decir que todo el tiempo, pero mayormente las becas son personas que son buenas en algún deporte. Um, y como les decía antes, eso se ve muy, muy, muy seguido en Estados Unidos. En Estados Unidos, el, quizás 70% de las personas que reciben una beca son personas que en algún momento han sido o son buenas en algún deporte. ¿Y el por qué se da esto? Es más que todo por una cuestión comercial. O sea, sabemos que muchas universidades son instituciones donde pues, buscan también verdad la ganancia. Entonces, cuando hay eventos deportivos, hay muchas personas que vienen a estos eventos. Y las personas que son, pues, digamos, los más destacados en los deportes van a llamar la atención de más fanáticos. En cambio, si alguien es inteligente, difícilmente, ¿verdad? En, nuestra, en la cultura en general, creo yo, en el mundo, difícilmente alguien inteligente va a llamar la atención de más personas para que vengan a verlo, a hacer algo inteligente. Entonces, en cambio, en los deportes, o sea, hacen cosas que, si bien es cierto, requieren inteligencia, pero también son más eh, vistosas. Y por lo tanto, pues, llaman a más personas, a más fanáticos, y eso termina generando más atención o más atracción y más ganancias para la universidad o para las instituciones en general. No voy a decir solo universidades, pero instituciones en general que dan, ¿verdad?, esas oportunidades. Y eso lo digo más que todo, como les digo, por los ejemplos que yo he visto en Estados Unidos, que pues allá eh, a los niños desde pequeños les empiezan a enseñar a ser buenos en básquet, a ser buenos en béisbol, y a veces a ser buenos en cuatro o cinco deportes, porque eso les va a ayudar a que en algún punto puedan tener una beca y puedan estudiar en la universidad. Entonces, y luego el detalle es que cuando ya el niño crece, tal vez ya se enamoró más del deporte que del estudio. Y la beca, que era la idea inicial, ya queda de lado porque es como que siempre y cuando sea bueno jugando, ya no importa tanto la universidad o ya no importa tanto que pase el curso. Entonces, that's a... It's a weird thing. It works in a really weird way. So, yeah, I kind of understand what you, where you're coming from, Yanira. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you Para know. Del but... circus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anime circus. I, well, I, think, I think so about the, the mm -hmm. football, the soccer. Mm -hmm. yeah, Because it's... Uh, it's attractive for almost all of the world. Mm hmm. Yeah, well, that. but anyway, that's what happens, you know, sometimes. Now, Janita, I would like to close the circle <laughs> with uh, your question to Goches. So let's hear what's your question for him. <laughs> okay, uh, Goches, which is your motivation in your life? <laughs> Difficult question. <laughs> <laughs> um... Well, to be honest, I would like to to have a kind of of peaceful life. Uh, for example, I I do yoga and and I want to try to be less materialistic and focus on things uh, more important than money or things like that. All right, that sounds like a proper motivation, you know, stepping aside from the cage or the regular world that we are supposed to live in and thinking more of yourself and your dreams and the things that you care about. So nice. That sounds great. Very good. Well, so now we have heard basically from everyone. I know that uh, for the ones that participated at the beginning, it became, you know, a little bit of a, um, <clears throat> what, a boring experience, let's say. But at the end, it's important that we get to practice, okay? And I wanted to hear from each and every one of you. Sometimes with the questions at the beginning of the class, I don't get to hear from you. And uh, also, the idea was to hear how well you guys can articulate questions. And um, to my opinion, you guys did well, okay? You guys did a great job on that. And, uh, well, next Monday, we're going to continue learning and continue um, practicing more from the platform. I think the reading exercise is going to be um, a skip for now. Depending on how well we keep on advancing, 
sorry, with the topics, we are going to come back into the into the reading because I would really love to have a chance, you know, to practice reading with you as I consider that it is one of the most important skills that sometimes we just leave aside because um, the idea is to establish verbal communication. And for verbal communication, what you need is um, listening and speaking. Therefore, well, reading and writing are not that important. Well, but uh, yeah, so that's it basically for today. All I have to do left is just thank you guys very much for your attention. And well, not attention this time around, more for your participation because you were um, participating more than uh, in previous classes. So thank you very much for that. And uh, I hope to see you guys next Monday. Remember, tomorrow we do not have a class. It's your day off. So, yes. Um, have a really good one. Yes, Nadia. Uh, and the, mon <clears throat> the next Monday is uh, first May 1st. And we we have a class this day? Well, I'm not sure. I didn't receive a schedule, so probably not. Probably not. Let, let me confirm tomorrow, okay? En el grupo básicamente se va a confirmar entonces eso, porque sí es cierto. Es, es el primero de mayo, así que es probable que, que sea día libre. Thank you for uh, pointing that out. Creo que era el domingo era, porque el año pasado fue domingo, pero este año no. Okay, well, uh, if not, it will be until Tuesday. But uh, all I have to do is basically wish you guys to have an amazing weekend and um, see you when I see you, okay? So have a really good one and see you the next one. Good night, bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye, good night. Bye-bye.